Tonight, we are taking on a most noble cause. Tonight, we are fermenting hard apple cider. We have organic apple juice that has been fresh pressed, not from concentrate, that's important to me. Pasteurized, that's important for the brew. 100% juice, never buy anything but that. No high fructose. Genetically modified Monsanto corn syrup. I was uh, holding back words there. Um, and you'll look on the ingredients list, it's a very important part. It'll say organic, pasteurized, unfiltered apple juice on this 365 every day from Whole Foods. What you cannot have are any preservatives, potassium or uh, potassium sorbate, what is the sulfates, sulfides, any crap that's scientific, you just want apple juice. Sorry if you hear Harry Potter going on in the background, the kids are entertaining themselves. So um, right now we've got sealed containers, you can do easy brewing by just adding yeast to these and putting airlocks on, but it will blow out the top as I have previously experienced. So I tried the wild fermentation method and I didn't follow the directions fully and it went bad. So now I've gone to the brew store and we are doing a different type. It's pretty much the same thing except we're buying yeast now that's been perfected for this purpose. So what we have here is a canning pot, a canning um, apparatus for boiling your little jars to get the seal proper. And this has proved useful for a number of things. You'll see this right here. We're also on a sauerkraut set tonight. We'll be making another two gallon batch of sauerkraut. It'll be a little bit less than that, but this is what we ferment with. Sorry for the monkey noise in the background. Um, so what we do is fill a little bit of water in the bottom. It can be tap water, that's just fine because we're just trying to get a boil and fill some water into here. Don't worry about the monkey. So we bring this to a ripe boil on high and put the jar in there. You can use hot water because it doesn't matter. We're just trying to get boiled water through these. Then we'll bring them to a full boil and you have to touch the top and notice condensation on the, on the lid or the top of your carboy. At which point you can pull them to make sure that they heat really well, you can put towels around it since the lid obviously won't fit on a big carboy sitting in there. It's got a metal contraption in the bottom to hold it off of the very bottom so that you're getting water underneath and boiling around it. And then you've got water in there that's going to bring to a boil, hopefully. If not, it's going to be well above the 140, 160 range to kill off anything. Then when that's to a full boil, you can have this going on top the whole time. Uh, you'll notice condensation up here as well. You uh, pull it with hot gloves on, pour the water out, attach this back on to seal out anything that would resettle back into the bottle. This is a three gallon carboy. Tonight we're making a three gallon batch, so what we're going to do is start with a five gallon carboy, and we're going to go to the next steps in just a moment here. So I boiled this tonight, and we're going to do a transfer to this in a couple days, so I'll just leave this on here and it'll be just fine. Um, let's see, so we'll go to the five gallon and uh, go through the process of making a cider mead tonight. Just a moment. Don't forget, while you're brewing, to have a glass of wine already ready already for your sipping pleasure. <laughs> yes. It is absolutely against the law to brew without drinking. So uh, you gotta follow the law. Um, be 21 and over in most states to do this. And uh, hopefully work with organic ingredients the whole way through. So I've learned a lot in the process of making just my first couple batches. To make the yeast starter, there's a lot of different advice online, and um, what I've kind of decided on is that you want to get your yeast going really well. And so what I've done here is taken this glass jar, which you can get at any type of uh, hobby or, um, you know, hardware-ish or grocery establishments and boiled it with water in there. I It says not to use municipal tap water because of chlorine and that will kill off your organisms or to use distilled water uh, because it will kill off or it won't provide the proper nutrients for your yeast to become active in and they will become deprived. 
So what I do is use distilled water, which I remineralize. This is what we do for our drinking water, is to get big five gallon jugs and BPA free bottles, and then use this concentrace, C-O-N-C-E-N-T-R-A-C-E, trace mineral drops, which are essentially the minerals that are in seawater, concentrated down, and it's got a massive list of some important things that are needed for your yeast to survive. So uh, I squirted, I don't know how much in there, just one, two, three good squirts, just one, two, and three into this little amount here, just to overdo the mineralization. Um, I usually do five squirts for five gallons of water, so if that gives you an idea, I did like three gallons of normal drinking to get this highly mineralized. So if you can use well water, they, they say that's probably just fine. You know, um, I boil this before I use it, and right now you'll see the thermometer. We're down to 130 degrees after it reached 160 for purification purposes of uh, any bacteria, just in case. And it's already probably just fine. But, um, you know, dissolved oxygen is low, so you're welcome to shake it up, get some oxygen back in there, and. Uh, then once it gets down to 105 degrees, 109 to 105 is where you want to add your yeast packets, which are now sitting in moisture. Um, and there's two different types that you can use for cider meads, from La Lalvin, the 71B1122, and the EC1118.